know he is here. He is here. I keep saying that because I know that. Do you know that? Do you know that he is here? I want to tell you people something. You people are in a good hand. The pastors in the church, they know God. I'm not saying it because I know them or I'm friends with them. No. You are in a good hand. So you should be grateful to God for where he has planted you. Hallelujah. And thank him for it. Amen. What is poderoso? Poderoso. Powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> you know, I wish I knew how to speak Spanish. Today's sermon would have been in Spanish. Because the Lord is saying something about the power in his name. Because he is a powerful God. But before I start, maybe some of you don't know me. My name is Ike, which actually means power. It is, means uh, poder de Dios. That means the power of God. That's what my name means. Amen. And uh, we started last week, and I realized I was a little racing last week. Amen. Hope you guys understood my accent and I didn't move too fast. Amen. We started last week, and we started talking about who is known by Jesus. It is very, very important. Hallelujah. And we talked about the fundamentals. For the people that were not here, we talked about that we are saved by faith and faith alone. Amen. And we now moved on to we are justified by our faith in the Lord Jesus. Then we studied the book of Romans. We focused on 6, 7, and 8. 6 saying that we are dead to sin. And sin has no dominion over us. That means for a child of God that is born of God, when you sin, you choose to sin. Not because the power of sin is compelling you to sin. Then we got to chapter 7 which is one of the most misunderstood scriptures in the chapters in the Bible, where some people think they are still in sin, we realize that if you walk in the flesh, you will fulfill the desires of the flesh. You will not please God when you walk in the flesh. But then we realize that when I enter Romans 8, where we stopped, where we realize that it's by the Spirit of God that is on the inside of you that crucifies the flesh on the cross daily. Hallelujah. And if you remember the first chapter verse we read, we read John 10, 26, 27. He said, the Lord Jesus Christ was saying, what did he say? He said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, hallelujah, and they follow me. He now went to the next one. I give them eternal life. And some people say, aha, once I'm born again, that's it. But we went in further to ask ourselves, who is it that is known by Jesus and how do you follow him? And that was all we did last Sunday. Amen? Amen? Today we are going to take it up a notch. We are going to do what they call the whole gospel. That is what we are going to discuss today. Because we need to understand what baptism is. Because once you give your life to Jesus, we baptize a symbol of what happened. What actually happened? Last Sunday, we dealt with the death on the cross. Remember, when Jesus Christ came, he lived on earth. He went to the cross and died. He was buried, and he rose again. And the whole of that is the gospel. And as a believer, you need to experience all of that. You need to experience his death on the cross, his burial, and his resurrection. Today, we are going to be focusing on his resurrection what is it when Jesus Christ rose from the dead? What happened? So we're going to start today, amen, going through the scriptures. Like I said, today's title is still, Are You Known by the Lord Jesus? And we've gone through our main text, which is John 10, 27, 28. We're going to start where we stop, Romans chapter 1. We're going to run through it, amen. And Romans, sorry, Romans chapter 8, 1 to 5, my mistake. He said, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Number two, verses 2. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. 
to be a sin offering, and so he condemned sin in the flesh. In order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live according, in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. I want you to mark something down real quick. Mind is mentioned here. Why is mind mentioned here? In the book of Matthew 15, the Lord Jesus Christ said, What a man eats does not defile him, but what comes out of his heart. When people talk about the flesh, they think it's this, your body. No. Your flesh is that part of you that have your mental faculty. That is your nature that can do sin. And it's not flesh. And we're going to talk about it today. And the Bible says those that, even though you are born again, but all you are consumed with is the things of this world. You mind the things of the flesh. You will please the flesh. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to move forward. How would the Spirit of God enable us to crucify the flesh daily? Because we realized from last Sunday that the flesh is not born again and cannot be born again. The verdict on the flesh is death. But then you carry it in your members. What do you do? You crucify it daily. Now the question is, the Spirit of God is the one that does the crucifixion. How does he even do that? We'll move on further to Romans, the same Romans chapter 8, verses 12. Hallelujah. He says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. Hallelujah. But it is not to the flesh to live according to, the, according to it. The next verse. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, hallelujah, if by the, if by the, you do what? You put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. There is a putting to death daily in your life. That has to be done. The Bible says in the book of John, in the book of uh, uh, Romans 6, 4, what did he say? We were died with him in baptism. And we resurrected with him to do what? To live a new life. When the Lord Jesus Christ came and died, we learned last Sunday, he died on the cross. Sin died. Lord died. The spirit came. He resurrected again. You need to experience that resurrection. It is part of salvation. It is part of the gospel. Some of us will get to the point where we know we are dead to sin, all right? But then it doesn't stop there. You need to be resurrected with him. Because that is where your victory is. Yes, because sin has died. Yes, you are buried with him. But that is not all. He resurrected. Paul was saying in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, what did he say? He said, if Christ did not rise from the dead, our faith is useless. We have all men most miserable. It is in the resurrection that your faith is anchored. Without the resurrection, we might as well go home. But he did not stay in the grave. Amen. So we're going to run through scriptures now because we're going somewhere to see that we need to put to death the misdeeds of the flesh. If you can go real quick to Romans 13, 14. Romans 13, 14. Hallelujah. He said, rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Remember what I say. Think, mind. Think, mind. Why? Because your sinful nature operates from the mind. Like I said, Matthew 15. Jesus Christ, they, you know, Jesus Christ and his disciples, they were eating without washing their hands. And the Pharisees came. How can you not obey the traditions of the elders? Hallelujah. You don't wash your hands before eating. What did Jesus Christ say? What a man eats would not defile him. But what comes out of his heart? If you mark all the scriptures we are going to read about the spirit of God putting to death your flesh, it talks about your mind a lot. The mind of man is the battleground. If the devil defeats you in the area of your mind, even though you are born again, you will continue to live in sin. And it's very, very important we understand this. From Romans 6, the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul was writing, most of the things he said here is that 
We know. We know. Why was he using we know? You are supposed to know these things. In the book of John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus Christ told the, 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 the Jews that believed in him, if you hold on to my teaching, you will be my disciple. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. People of God, listen. Being able to know the truth and understand it is very important. I'll tell you something. In the book of Luke 24, after Jesus Christ died, his disciples, why? They were afraid. They locked themselves in the room, and they were praying. They were scared. Two of them ran, not ran, but went to another city. As they were going, the Lord Jesus Christ came and joined in with them. And he was walking with them, and he made them not to know who he was. And they were all sad. Did you know what happened? They killed our master. He came. Why are you so sad? He told him everything. The Lord Jesus Christ said something remarkable. He said, you slow in believing. Can you imagine a people that walked with the Lord Jesus for three years, saw all his miracles, saw all he did, and he kept telling them, the Son of Man will suffer a lot in the hands of the Pharisees and die. He kept telling them, they were even sad in the book of John, 14, 15, oh, he's going to leave us, he's going to die. And when he died, they forgot. The Bible says that Jesus Christ began from the Moses and opened the scriptures to them. People of God, listen, we need to understand completely what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. What his burial meant and what his resurrection means. Because some of us have got to a point where we think we believe in him, but we've not experienced the death. We've not experienced the burial, and we've not experienced the resurrection. And people of God, I put it to you, you need to experience these three for you to be sure you are born of him. Hallelujah. We'll continue. Now, we go now to Galatians 5.16, quickly. He said, so I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So how does the Spirit do this? How do you even walk in it? If you go back to Romans 8, where we read, those are mind the things of the Spirit will do the things of the Spirit. Why? God told Joshua, Joshua 1.8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night so that you will be able to do whatever is written in it. It is by the word of God, which is breathed by the Spirit of God, which is the sword of the spirit that the spirit used to kill your flesh. So if you're a believer, you don't spend time in the word. You don't even know what the word says about you. You don't even know what you are supposed to do. Faith, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. It is by the word of God you read and the spirit of God will use the word and the finished work on the cross to set you free. Let us go quickly. We go to now Gal- the same for Galatians 5, 24 to 25. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Now, he's saying here that if you have not crucified the flesh, you don't belong to him. Plain and simple. Those who belong to Christ, you, it's a thing that has to be done. You have to do it. The proof that you belong to him is that actually that flesh has been crucified. He now went on further to the next one. Hallelujah. That's uh, 20. Since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step by the spirit. You do not rely on yourself anymore. You rely completely on the spirit. You move quickly with me to Ephesians 4, 22 to 25, 24. He said, we were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. The next one. To be made new in the attitude of your mind. Mind again mentioned here. You know, I told you to mark the word mind. Why? What defiles you comes from your mind. And if your mind, because, see, people of God, the Lord Jesus He's done everything. When he died, he said, it is finished. It is for you by his spirit that lives on the inside of you to bring to your mind what he has already done. And by faith, you believe. And once you do that, 
it begins, the Spirit of God begins to work on the inside of you. And when you keep in step with the Holy Spirit, you put off your old self. That self is dead. But you, don't, you have to shake it off. You have to crucify. You have to get it off you. And then live in the new life that he has. Which you remember in Romans 6, 4. He said the new life is his resurrection. He resurrected that we might live a new life. Hallelujah. Then we'll leave the last one in this category. Colossians 3, 4 to 5. He said, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Five. Put to death again. You have to kill it. You have to kill something. Therefore, where, whatever belongs to your early nature, sexual immorality, impurity, loss, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. There is a putting to death of something that is already dead. Why? Because you carry, like we explained, we are still flesh. John 3, 6, flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. You are still flesh. Yes, we are born of God. You have your kids, you are a child of God, you get married, and you have your kids. Your children are not born again. They are not born of the Spirit because flesh in you gave birth to them. They on their own have to come to a point where they receive the gift of God and their spirit man is brought back to life and they walk the walk of faith for themselves. They the walk of following the Lord Jesus because you carry that flesh. But what do we do? The Spirit of God is on the inside of you, crucifying the flesh daily. Now we now go to the meat of our discussion today, which is going to be a couple of questions we're going to go through. Hallelujah. The question now is, who is known by Jesus? Matthew 7, 23 and 24. Who is this person that is known by Jesus truly? Matthew 7, 23 to 24. He said, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you Evil doers. The next one. He said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now, this is when the Lord Jesus has done giving the sermon on the mount. He even take, took it up a notch. He said, Listen, you are told if you commit murder, is when you kill somebody, hold it. When you hate a brother, you've already committed murder. He said, say when you have sexual adultery, it's when you do it physically. He said, no way. When you look at a woman lustfully. And they say, have you come to abolish the law? He said, no. I've not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. People of God, listen. Before we started here, he was telling them, if you want me to know you, the people that are known by God are truly the people that have crucified their flesh. And as a result of the resurrected Christ. If you are still living in a position where you claim to be born of God, but your flesh is not crucified, you are still living at the dictates of the flesh, he does not know you. Let us go forward. He again went to Matthew 25, 12. Go to Matthew 25, 12. This, before we read this, is the parable of the ten virgins. The word virgin is very crucial. Why is it crucial? They are all supposed to be pure. But here, he still does not know some virgin. Why? He said, but he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. You know the story. If you don't, ten virgins, they all got sleep, got, got slept because the master tarried in coming, the bridegroom. And when the bridegroom showed up finally, they trimmed up their land, but there was no oil. They asked the people that had oil in their lamp. They said, we don't have enough. They ran off. By the time they came back, the master told them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Now, why? They are the ones that did not finish the whole baptism. What is that? You gave your life to Jesus by faith. You could die with him by faith. You have to resurrect with him. It is a must. That is the gospel. That is salvation. It, you can't do one part and stop there. No, that is not salvation. Because he did not just come and die. Like I told you in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, Paul said, if he did not rise from the dead, our faith is useless. Question for you, how did we receive salvation? We got salvation by faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. Question for you, if you pull that plug that is faith, 
do you still have salvation? If the pillars in this building, we put a dynamite and we blow out all the pillars holding this roof, this house will collapse. You believe with me that it is not anything we did that gave us salvation. Amen. How did we get it? By faith in the Son of God. Question. If you pull the plug, which is faith, that brought salvation, is salvation still there? It cannot be. We'll prove that. Let us go on. Hallelujah. Now, the last one is 2 Timothy 2.19, the final one, and we move forward. He said, now, before we go here, this is Paul telling Timothy about some people, two men, that are beginning to preach that the resurrection had already happened. And the Bible say, and de- made a lot of people depart from the faith, deviated the faith of men. And he now said, nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his. Why would he be saying he knows those who are his? The same thing we've read already in Matthew 7, th- uh, and again, Matthew 12, and now we're reading again. He knows. And then he made a remarkable statement. And everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. People of God, do you know why we are going through all this process? There is deception. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1, in the last days, many would depart from the faith and follow deceiving spirits and doctrines taught by demons. Remember, we started by following Jesus. In this end time, a lot of people follow doctrines taught by demons. But you guys are in a good place because you are in a good hand. They teach you the word of God. But don't take it for granted because we are living in a time where they will tell you, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter. You are born again, right? You confess the Lord Jesus, but it doesn't matter how you live. Wherever, how you live confirms what you believe in. Because salvation is not just you believe. Yes, you believe. You died with him on the cross. You were buried with him. You resurrected with him. If you don't fulfill the three, I'm afraid for your salvation. Because the resurrection is the part that makes sure that your flesh died. You do not live after the dictates of the flesh. And that is when he will say, I know you. Hallelujah. Let's go on further. Amen. Amen. Now, the question I'm going to ask is very important because I say something. Some people are like, hmm, are you trying to say? I'm not saying anything. What I'm going to ask is this. Can one depart from faith and still have salvation? You know, I said it. A lot of us say, oh, yeah, I'm born again. Yeah, I'm going to heaven. Can one? Now, you know, in the United States, you people are blessed. Some of our brothers and sisters right now as we speak, they are in Afghanistan, right? And a jihadist will bring out a rifle and put it on their head and say, deny Jesus or your skull is shattered. If that believer says, well, Lord, you know I love you, I deny you, is that person still in faith? Is a question. At that moment, in the book of 1 John, if you deny that the Son of God is Lord, you are not born of God. What am I trying to tell us, make us understand, people of God? It is a serious thing we are dealing with here. That because you've not experienced some things, believers, your life means nothing. You died on the cross. So when your life is in danger, I'm already dead. Go ahead. Jesus Christ said, do not be afraid of those that will kill the body. But be afraid of God that will both kill the body, put the body and the soul in hell salvation to some of us we've been taught is that, oh yeah, I confess, I believe. Yes, it begins the process. But until you get to a point where your very life, you understand that you are dead on the cross, you no longer live, you and you have a master and a savior. Those believers, you know, as I speak to you, they are martyred, they are killed. Why? Why would the devil come after you if once you are born again, you are forever born again, and nothing changes, he will let you be because he has lost you, right? But why is he still after you? Because he knows that your salvation is anchored to your faith. Let us show that. Hallelujah. He said, go to Matthew 10, 22, real quick. Matthew 10, he said, you will be hated by everyone because of me. 
For the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Why would the Lord Jesus say this? You confess him as Lord and Savior, right? You believe in him. But he's now telling you, hold on. Until you get to the end, I'm afraid, are you really saved? These are the things we need to know and understand. Because in our time we are taught, I've said it, yes, salvation, you are born again, there's no doubt, the eternal life is in you. But you need to remember that the salvation you are talking about is anchored by your faith in the Lord Jesus. That if you depart from that faith, salvation goes. Hallelujah. So salvation is not written, hooked up, anchored forever. No. The thing that brought salvation is faith. That's why Jesus Christ said, if I come back on earth, will I still find faith in man? Because that is the thing that brought your salvation in the first place. And you know, it's interesting what they teach us these days. Hallelujah. That you know, it doesn't matter. I'm born of him. I'm secured. Nothing that happens around me can affect my eternal life. Eternity, rather. Another question for us. You know, people are pushed to the point where they live anyhow they want and they claim they are born again. We are getting there. Hallelujah. Let us go to the next one. That is Matthew 24, 13. Again, the Lord Jesus Christ said what? But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Confirming. This is another scripture. Now we go to Hebrews 10, 39. It proves the point. Hebrews 10, 39. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith. And are saved. People of God, listen. He started here by saying from 30, 30, 38, the, my righteous one will live by faith, but whoever that draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. What is keeping us? Our salvation is our faith in the Lord Jesus. Don't be deluded that salvation is something. No. Your salvation is your faith in the Lord Jesus. Was that faith shifts. Your salvation shifts. Hallelujah. We need to understand this. And now the Lord Jesus Christ said, he said here, he that endures to the end shall be saved. Now we go to Revelation 35. I'm saying all this scripture to prove a point. Now, you know, the one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never brought the Name of that person from the book of life. Stop. The day you gave your life to Jesus, amen, your name was written in the book of life. Hallelujah. What is Jesus saying here? As you follow me, and you get to a point. You see, you know, it's interesting how deception is. We believe that God made us a free moral agent. What that means is, God will never force you to do anything. If not, all of us will go to heaven. Isn't it? But he still brought his son to come and die. And he still presents the gift of salvation for you to receive freely. It is your choice to receive it. You can choose to receive. You can choose to reject it. That is why some of us will go to heaven and some people will go to hell. Hallelujah. Now, you now think that God will go against his word. And against his law. Now I'm born again. He has locked me in no matter what I do. I'm going to heaven. That will be God violating his own principle. So even as you follow the Lord Jesus and you get to a point, Lord, this is too hard for me. I reject you. He will not, gonna, he will not force you. He will not say, you must believe. No. Because that will be him. The Bible says, instead of the word of God not to come to pass, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will be. So the Lord has spoken and he has created man. That you are a free moral agent. You choose whatever you want. So you choose to follow him. You choose to believe him. True. He will welcome you. If at any point, but he's a merciful father. That's why he put his spirit on the inside of you. If you want to go wrong, he's going to say, my daughter, don't. The spirit of God will be grieved. Don't try it. He will beg you, don't. Don't do it. That is why as a believer, when you sin, you get restless. You know when we started, if you sin with impunity, when you sin, it means nothing. There's no difference. I'm afraid for you. 
Because we are not serving the same God. Your master is the, is the devil. But when you sin, you are restless, you are uncomfortable. You run to him, Father, I'm sorry, forgive me. He will forgive you. Hallelujah. And he restores you. And you carry on going. Amen. The reason why I'm laying this foundation is what I'm going to read next. This is 1 Peter 1.9. 1 Peter 1.9. Now, this verse explains all I've been saying this morning so far. What did he say? For you are receiving the end result of your faith. What? Read it with me. The end result of your faith is what we call salvation. It's what God calls salvation. So do not be deceived. They tell you, oh yes, you confess the Lord Jesus, fine. You are saved, no doubt. You are going to heaven. But that salvation is dependent on your faith. But he's a good God. Hallelujah. You know, in the book of Revelation, there was a time some people, Lord Jesus Christ, another point to prove something to you. If salvation is a one-time thing and forever thing, the Lord Jesus would not have bothered to go to the church in the Revelations. They saw them drifting away. And that is our God for you. He loves you so much. You will not, be, you will not go to hell. Amen. He will do everything to get you on board. He sent his angel. Go tell them. You are walking. You are getting off. Same for you. If you go wrong, the spirit of God will give you no sleep. Wake up. That is why 1 John 1, 9 is there. The people that believe, the people that believe that once born again, forever born again, that their spirit is never sinning. When they sin, it's only the flesh that sins. The spirit doesn't sin. That is why a lesbian can be born again and going to heaven. A homosexual, it doesn't matter. No. No. You cannot be anything and be born of God. It is not that way. He is born. If you are born of God, it's not anyhow. You have to be born of God. So that was why the Lord came to them in the book of Revelation. Watch it all. You are moving away. Repent. The Lord will always tell you to repent. Why? Because there's a provision by the blood to wash you and reinstate you and strengthen you. But when the devil deceives and gets you to a point where you believe you can never sin because they now tweet, twat, First John, that he that is born of God cannot sin. That's what they say. Cannot sin. No. Does not continue to sin is different. They tell you you cannot sin again. It doesn't matter what you do. It is your flesh that sins. Your spirit is born again. But the flesh, forgetting that in the first place, it is not the spirit that sinned. It is the flesh that was sinning. So why would the son of God come and die on the cross for you to continue in sin? It doesn't make sense. I will not serve a God that cannot deliver me from sin. I, I mean, what's the point? It's like any other religion. Hallelujah. We are going somewhere. Now, we are going to conclude, and this is the heat of the matter. Like I told you, there's a deception. And we've laid the foundation carefully that our salvation, you know, the reason why we started the way we started last Sunday is to lay the foundation that nobody will confuse what we are saying that it is what you do that saves you. No. Man cannot be saved by anything you do. It's not by your works. It's by faith. However, he that is born of God does not continue to sin. Your faith in the Lord Jesus, which by his spirit who crucify the flesh, will produce results. Hallelujah. That is why there is the fruit of the spirit. Now, we're going to go real quick. We're going to read this. 1 John 3, 4 to 9. 1 John 3, 4 to 9. He said, everyone who sins breaks the law. Now, you know some people say sin is a, sin is a physical thing. And it's a spiritual thing. But look at this. Sin is defined here clearly. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness defined. There's no gray area. Keep going. He said, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. He's saying the reason why the Son of Man came, that he would take away sin. People, the Lord Jesus died on the cross, a sinless man, because he had the sin of the world. The Father 
turned away from him. You think the Lord tolerates sin? The reason why Jesus came is to take away sin. He now said, no one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No, no one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Keep going, bro. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. Deception. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's words. No one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning, because they have been born of God. Hallelujah. You know, when we did Romans chapter 6, we got to 24, 25, and what did he say? You are a slave to whoever you obey. It is it's ironic for one to think that you live like Satan and follow Satan, and you think the Lord Jesus is your master. It doesn't make sense. He say, you follow me. So wherever he goes, you follow him. If he goes this way and you go that way, you're no longer following him. Hallelujah. Go real quick with me. 1 Corinthians 6.10. 1 Corinthians 6.10. He said, No thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkard, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, Paul is now being specific here. If you are living according to the flesh... You sin, and in math, it doesn't make any difference for you. The people of the world will do, you do exactly like them. There's no difference. What does that mean? You will not inherit the kingdom of God. Go quickly with me. Galatians 5.21. Let's run through it now, bro. And envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like, I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Go quickly again, Ephesians 5 to, 5 to 7. For, for of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not partner do not be partners with them. These three scriptures is telling us who is known by Jesus. He said it in the book of Matthew 7. If you hear this sermon, all these my messages, and you put them into practice, you are like a wise man that beats his ass on the rock. Listen, he said he resurrected that we might live a new life. That is the finished work of the cross. We need to get to that place. You don't stay at the entrance and say, yes, I've got it. No. The whole baptism must be experienced by your life. You don't experience the beginning and not the last. Remember, Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For in this gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from the beginning to the end. As it is written, the righteous will live by faith. El justo vivaral. Paul Affair. Hope I did that correct in Spain. Amen. The just shall live by faith. Amen. No, quickly, my brother, you go to Colossians 3, 6, 7. He say, because of this, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in the side, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. Amen. Is that it, bro? Okay, yeah, 10. Go to 10, sorry. <laughs> Amen. And have put on the new life, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of his creator. See, we need to put on Christ. We need to live like he lived. I know we've been saying it like, if you have a sin that is holding you down, that is not the will of God. That is not Christ. We're getting there where I'm going to tell you my story truly. For years, I worked in sin. I was held down. 
like he saw the disciples. It was when the Lord Jesus Christ showed up and opened the scriptures for them. And they realized truly the Son of Man needed to suffer this. And their eyes were open. And they believed God. Some of us are in that state where there is a veil covering our eyes. We just need to know this and believe. And we will be set free. Quickly. And finally, let us, I want to show something to you. Because we can skip it and get there. It says in Revelation 21, 8 and 22. Revelation 21, 8. He said, now, these are the people that we inherit. You know, we always say, yes, you are born again, right? But God, in God's eyes, the proof that you are born of his son is that you live like his son. The Bible says, be ye holy, just like I'm holy. The last, the last thing that will judge people that will inherit the kingdom of God is how your faith in the Lord Jesus will, is able to transform you to be like the Lord Jesus. And look at what he said here. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic art, the idolaters and the all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning fire. This is the second death. Why is he not you saying, if you don't believe, why is he not using that here? Is, does that mean that the Bible didn't say that? You have to believe. That's the criteria because you can't save yourself. But that faith you have in the Lord Jesus, once it comes into your life, it changes you. You cannot have an encounter with the living God and remain the same. It's not possible. You can't have an encounter with the God that made the heavens and the earth. And he leaves you the same. No, he cannot do that. And that is why he's checking people. Move quickly with me. We'll do Second Peter now. Second Peter. Hey, skip the next one. He said, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? Hallelujah. You ought to live holy and godly lives. The next one. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Hallelujah. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brothers Paul also wrote you, wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. We read everything in the book, Epistle of uh, Paul. He's here, Peter here, referring to all we've been reading. That if you are not living a holy life, not in your, by your own strength, because in your own strength, you can't do it. We proved that point earlier. You have to live by the Spirit that will crucify the flesh daily. That you will show the image of the Son of God. Now, before I say something, go to Ezekiel 36. This is our last verse, and we pray. Ezekiel 36, 26. I want you to read with me slowly. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you. Why would he move you? Return with me to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. The reason why the Son of Man came is not to abolish his law. No. God cannot change his mind. He never did. Why would he? The reason why he gave you a new heart. You got born again. He gave you your spirit. is so that you will obey him. It's so that you will obey him. Not that you continue to sin. You can see from that scripture. He said when the spirit comes, it's to move you. People of God, listen. I know we are living in a time where it doesn't matter. The devil is a deceiver. And he knows how to deceive. He came to Eve and told Eve, listen, did God really say? He will tell you it doesn't matter. It's okay. You can do it. You are born again anyways. And feel Eve sin. He came to the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew 4. He said, if you are the son of God, he knew he is the son of God. But he said, are you really? What are we saying this morning, people of God? I'm not saying, I'm not condemning anybody. The message is not condemnation. 
is to bring us to the place of growth and maturity. That we are living in a time where there will be doctrines taught by demons. That you need to know that you know that you know that you are born of God. And that he that is born of God lives like God. And that salvation is not a flippant thing that you play with. The Lord Jesus Christ said, hold on to it. That no one will take it away from you. Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from 27. What did Paul say? I beat my body black and blue. At least after I've preached to others. I myself be totally disqualified. Why would he be saying that? A whole Paul that the Lord showed the revelations. He's still telling you, hold on. If I don't deal with this body, even me, I have the possibility of being disqualified. I'm going to read a scripture that every believer, you need to know it, you need to experience it, it has to be your life. If not, there is a danger in your life. And that is in Galatians 2.20. I didn't give it to them. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith for the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is the gospel. That is salvation. Where you get to a point in your life that you understand that the finished work of the cross, you died with him on the cross, you were buried with him, and you have risen with him, you can now say, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is salvation. That is the gospel. Before we go, I don't want to see people. We are children of God. We are born of God. We are going to heaven. It's a reminder to us that we should hold on to what we have. If you are here, do not feel no shame. I I gave my life at the age of 12. Born again in a church. Not the first time I heard the gospel that I gave my life to, to Christ. A minister had to be coming. I never wanted to go. I was rough, violent. My mother would drag me to church. Would come to church. I'll be playing at the back. Until that one day, they invited a minister from outside town. He was talking about this Jesus. And he broke me. I ran to the altar weeping. I gave my life to him. But then, a sin remained. See, if you're a young person here, you are still living in, with pornography. You have addiction with pornography. Or you are addicted to whatever thing. And in your mind, yes, I'm born again. Yes, you are born again. But you need to die to yourself and resurrect with him. For you to be sure that he knows you. Because God doesn't know sin. That was why when his son died on the cross, God himself abandoned his son. If he can abandon his son because he carried the sin of the world, who do you think you are? He will ditch you in a heartbeat. You need to understand that God doesn't play with sin. It took me 14 years to get to a point where I got to Romans chapter 4 that I've been justified. And I, I come to realize that I'm dead to sin. But then I fell again to Romans 7 where I was fighting sin. It took God again to open my eyes to realize that son until Galatians 2.20 is your life. Forget it. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body. I live by faith in the son of God. And daily, let me tell you people, we are living in a time it's going to get darker you know, you look around, you say, it's okay. You people are in a good hands. And I can tell you that for, for the truth. The man of God here, born of God, headed to heaven. He doesn't care about the things of this world. He loves his master. The pastoral is here. But out there, it's not like that. But do not stay in this your safe place. But if you are here, you have a sin you're struggling with, you can come. Listen to me. It's better you fix it now. Tell God, if you are truly God and you died, fix me. He will fix you. Hallelujah. If you are a believer, to pray, to pray is still difficult for you. You struggle. To read the Bible is a problem. You pray for one second, you fall asleep. This is the time to run to the Lord. Let the pastors pray for you and strengthen your faith. People, it is the, what we are talking about here is not a joke. It's a life and death matter. 
And until we get this right, get the foundation sorted that God can walk in us. The truth of the matter is that among us here are prophets. Among us here are evangelists. The reason why we are tossed to and fro is because we are not grounded in the world. The Lord Jesus Christ told them, you do not, you are in error because you neither know the scripture or the power of God. I ask you, do you know the scriptures? Have you experienced the power of God in your life? What is your testimony? Revelation chapter 12, 11. They overcame by the blood of a lamb and the word of their testimony. What is your testimony? Do you have an anchor in your faith where you can say, the Lord did this for me. The Lord delivered me from this. If you have something in you that is still holding you down,